Today I'll show you how to answer exam questions such as the ones you see in you all step one or step two CK. So let's get started. Let's say you're faced with this question on your exam. The first thing that you need to decide on is how much time you have. If you have five minutes to answer this question, it would be a totally different game than if you have minute or minute and a half, which is usually the case in you all or step one or step two CK. So let's say it's similar to you all. You only have a minute and a half to answer this question. The time might not be enough to go through this whole question and focus on every single thing they say. So you need to find some strategies that would help you use the best the time that you have to answer the question without necessarily reading every single thing in the question. So where do you start? I found that screening the answers, not necessarily reading every single detail, just screening quickly the answers to know what is this question about and have an idea about the question is helpful. And this is something I found later on during my studying but I found it very helpful to have a quick look at the answer. So let's look here at this example. Instead of reading, give the patient blood despite the patient refusal because this is an emergency and might lead to patient death, don't do that. Just look quickly and see, give the patient blood. Very quickly, ask the wife for permission, ask the hospital committee, respect the patient wishes. Now I know that this is a behavioral question, so when I go and read the question, I don't focus on the detail of the blood pressure and the temperature and the heart rate and the white count, you go directly to the point, which is this is a ethical situation that you need to find what is the dilemma here and how to answer. So after I have a very quick look at the answers here, I go and read usually the last line or line and a half. So here I see the patient reports that he's a Jehovah witness and he would not like to receive blood. What is the best next step? So now I know that this patient is Jehovah Witness. Jehovah Witness do not like to receive blood. Let's look at the age because whenever I think of a Jehovah Witness, if they're adults, they have the right to refuse blood. If they're uh, minors, you have to give them blood. So an important consideration here is the age. So now I see the age, I see the patient want to refuse blood, he's a Jehovah Witness, then I can go and read the answers. Now I might skip all that. If you're low on time, you don't have much time for the other questions, you might skip all that and go to directly and now read the options in detail to pick the right one. But if you have a little bit of time, you can go quickly now and read the question. So now instead of spending so much time reading every single detail here, you can go quickly over that. So I'm gonna highlight what kind of my eye looks at specifically when I'm reading this question quickly, knowing that now I know that this is an ethical dilemma. This is an adult patient with a Jehovah Witness who doesn't want blood. So now I already have bias in my head to the answer and the situation. And I'm looking for some keywords that might confirm or contradict my hypothesis about the situation here. So I read very quickly, uh, 48 year old patient, history of some problems. I don't care about that much here. Uh, presents to the emergency room, vital signs, the patient seems to be uh, having low blood pressure, high heart rate, uh, DMI, I don't care too much, they started with IV fluids, hemoglobin is low, uh, I don't care about the labs much here, uh, intra-abdominal bleeding, uh, CT scan, before sending the patient to this scan, the patient wants to stabilize, order unit of blood, as the patient was, the physician was consenting, the patient reports Jehovah Witness, not like to receive blood. So now we understand the situation. It confirms our hypothesis that this is an adult patient who doesn't want to receive blood despite being in low blood pressure and might have serious bleeding. So now we go and read the options. But you see, if you are going and reading the question without having that kind of direction towards what type of question is it, how am I approaching it, you might spend double the time reading the same exact question. As I said, you might be skipping reading the whole question if you don't have much time and you just want to keep moving. So let's go and read the options. So I generally recommend reading the options in detail. Why? Because sometimes, especially with these ethical questions, they might play with certain words and some question, one answer might look right. However, if you read it in detail, you might find another option that is better. Always think of UL questions or step questions. They're not looking for the correct answer. They're looking for the best answer. So some options might look right or they might be right, but another option might be even better. So let's look at the answers here. Give the patient blood despite the refusal because this is an emergency. And as we know, this is not right because an adult patient who is conscious and has capacity 
can refuse treatment even if that treatment leads to patient death. So that option is wrong. Ask wife for permission. No, that doesn't make sense. You need to take the permission from the patient themselves. Ask the hospital committee. No, we don't involve the hospital committee if the patient is awake and they're aware of the situation and they still refuse blood. Respect the patient wishes and do not administer blood. I would say this option looks right. However, I don't confirm until I read all the options. Explain to the patient how it's unreasonable to refuse blood in such critical situation. So if that option was saying, explain to the patient the benefit and the risk of receiving blood, not receiving blood, what can that lead to? That might be the correct option. Although four is right, it's better always to discuss with the patient and let them decide themselves. But because here it says it's unreasonable to refuse blood, that is not the right option. You can't tell a patient it's unreasonable what you're uh, trying to do here. So if you're trying to explain to them, discuss with them, that would be a good option before not administering the blood, but you can't tell a patient, oh, what you're saying is unreasonable. Therefore, in this question, between these options, I would choose option number four, which is respect the patient wishes and do not administer blood. Why? Because this option is correct and also the best, because there is no better option among these. However, if you're low on time, you might consider skipping reading the details of each option if you found the right option. Sometimes you might find the, the last few lines here instead of Jehovah Witness, but it's the best next step. They might ask you directly, what is the mechanism of action of this medication? Boom, you don't need to read anything now. It's a very direct question. You just need to know what is the mechanism of action. You don't need to read the whole vignette, but sometimes you have also to be careful. They might throw a keyword in the middle of the vignette that might throw the whole diagnosis that you have in mind. So that's why, especially for diagnosis, ethical situations, if it doesn't seem clear or something seems off, read quickly the whole option, the whole question and the options to know the correct answer. And finally, I want to talk about the strategies that is commonly used, which is the option elimination. So if you find three options to be definitely wrong, you would eliminate them and then you would be left with one or two options and then you would either guess what is the option or try to see what you think is the better option. So for here, that was definitely wrong, that was definitely wrong, and that was definitely wrong. So let's say you're unsure between four and five. If you take a guess now, it's 50% instead of 20% if you're just uh, picking randomly from five options. So the option eliminating strategy might leave you with one final option that you can pick or sometimes between two options and then you would guess and get a 50% chance of getting it right. If you need one-on-one -on -one help like the one we did here going over your questions, seeing where you're making your mistakes, trying to give you a better strategy on how to prepare for your exams, what best resources to prepare from, make sure to check out our USMLE tutoring and I'll leave the link for that in the description below. Also, we have many courses to teach you how to study for exams, how to do research and the biostatistics part of the USMLE exam. If you find any value in this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you get notified whenever I post future videos on my YouTube channel. Thank you everyone so much for watching and good luck on your exams.